I do like how we are constantly in combat here. <laughs> it's very fun. Ah, uh, that was a bad idea. I should have taken cover. Oh, don't do that. Oh, there actually is no real cover here. Right, I think the only cover in the Matrix is half cover, which is silly. But damn, Johnny. Taking some bumps. Uh, ooh. Uh, one particular pediatrician's entry stands out from the rest. Child suffers from uh, chronic depression and social anxiety, most likely caused by his physical abnormalities. We've seen many cases like this recently, with the outbreak of changeling children being born. With the aberrant physiology we're seeing, there is no telling what sort of brain functions are affected. Prescribed a series of sedatives last year that seem to have no effect. Upping the dosage. Data missing are corrupted. Contact your administrator for help. Great. The file is quite large and takes well over an hour to read through. The full entry, however, is the most significant. It is written by Dr. Henry Holmes. Silas has overcome significant mental disorders and no longer goes through periods of violent episodes. Latest medications have proven especially effective, but I believe that being treated by another elf has significantly impacted his treatment. Unfortunately, my efforts to maintain an emotional boundary with him have proven challenging. He has bonded to me in an unhealthy and frankly an unnerving way. His hero worship exhibits itself in the form of mimicked speech patterns and adopting my dress. For this reason, and for the health of the patient, I am assigning another doctor to this case. I will inform him at his next session. Huh. Oh, that's not good. That's pretty intense for medical doctors. Actually, no. If there's ever going to be black ice anywhere, it should probably be in medical records. I think that makes sense. You want that shit secure. Wow, fuck. Is that, this shit can kill you in real life, is the thing. It does real damage to your brain. Uh, check current employment status. Dr. Henry Holmes currently holds the position of Chief, Psy Chief Psychiatrist and Administrator at Mercy Mental Hospital, Snohomish, Washington, UCAS. Check previous employers. Psychiatrist in residence, Mercy Mental Hospital, private practice. Huh. Bingo. Oh yeah. And I think that's like the most decking you have to do in this game, which is sad. Reality is at the end of day contextual. What? Reality is at the end of day contextual. And as the meat world comes back, oh, reality is at the end of the day contextual. Right, there we go. And as the meat world comes back into focus, your head once again tries to settle on which world is the real one. While the philosophical question lingers, your meat body demands food and drink. You disconnect from your deck to find that the Union's- Wow, that just disappeared. Okay. Then I get to finish that sentence. Hey, man. David looks almost as tired as you do. You can tell that this case has gotten under his skin like it has yours. Any luck in there? We found an exact match for the DNA, but it was linked to a dead chop shop assistant by the name of Silas Forsberg. Now, I have my theories, but what do you think is going on here, Alley Cat? The DNA evidence doesn't belong to the killer. No, that can't be. Maybe Silas faked his death. That's a distinct possibility. What was it that we saw in the autopsy report? 
Uh, the face was so mangled that they had to use dental records to identify him. Good catch! That matches up with something I've seen runners try. It's easy enough for a to find a body shop that'll make a replica set of teeth for you. Find some schlub off the street no one will miss, swap the teeth, and throw the heat off your trail for a while. Lucky I've never been that desperate. But why would he need to go to such lengths? Did the police records have something linking him to a different crime? He had a prior for unlicensed plastic surgery. True, wouldn't look too good on someone's record if they wanted to become a doctor. I think this is beginning to come together. The late Silas left all his belongings to a doctor. Dr. Holmes. Employment records have him as the administrator at Mercy Mental, and the picture on his file matches the person you saw downtown. The same person this DNA belongs to. All the evidence points to him being your killer, whoever he really is. Um, I should go find this Dr. Holmes and ask him some very pointed questions. Please pay him my respects. I always find that high caliber rounds get the message across. We should clearly hire some friends and go loaded for bear. I signed a load of the ton of valuable data from those Lone Star Matrix notes. Here's a cut. I'll see you later. Hell yeah. Let's get some new gear. Okay, so let's get... Oh, fuck. That gives me more quickness. We're buying that. It's got like a bunny face. Oh, that's sick. I like that. That's cool. Uh, let's buy a new gun. The most expensive gun they got. Can I sell stuff? Yeah. Okay. I don't even have, like, points in melee weapons. You know what? If I'm gonna be a street samurai... Wow, I have a lot of karma. Let's pick up some points in melee weapons. So I want to use a katana. Fuck it, right? Yeah. Hell yeah. Hey, Mr. Delilah. If you're looking for runners again, I'm your guy. Discreet service only. I need to hire a crew. Let's see. I have plenty of money. I think I can bring Shannon with me. Wait, can I not? Oh, I can. Wait, why can't I bring Coyote? Hold on. Uh, but I can't go upstairs, so I guess I can't bring Coyote if I talk to her. Let's bring Shannon. Where is she? There she is. I did like... Uh... Where's On the Rocks? There you are. And that mage was that. You know what? That, this was actually a pretty good team composition. Let's go confront Dr. Holmes. The blood you found in the warehouse belongs to a man masquerading as one Dr. Holmes, and you've tracked him to Mercy Mental Hospital, located in the notoriously anti-meta-human farmlands of Snohamish. The drive to the hospital is long and unpleasant. Finally, you reach the walled and gated hospital compound. Despite the pretense of security, the gate is unguarded, unlocked, and open. No one stops or greets you as you drive up the large, crumbling building. Gothic ramparts top a damaged roof, cracked walls, and broken windows. All around the building is a lawn gone wild. Only the artificial light from within speaks of inhabitants. You walk up the hospital steps to confront Sam Watts' killer and bring an end to the Emerald City Ripper. Oh, shit. <clears throat> huh. 
Hell yeah. Fuck that guy. Hate that guy. Welcome, ma'am. What business brings you to Mercy Mental Hospital? I'm here to see Holmes. Dr. Holmes. Ah, a new customer. Please wait in the common room up ahead. I'll notify the good doctor. Alright. Well, that was easy. Huh. I'm not gonna get much out of this. Ever. Hey, lady. Have you seen Josie? I don't think so. I know, right? I haven't seen him in days. Dr. Philippe told me not to worry about it. He doesn't worry too much. But who am I supposed to play chess with? Donnie over there can't suss more than match four. What, uh... What's so important about this Josie character? He's a great guy. I mean, everyone, everybody likes him. Sure, he looks like a meathead, but once you get to know him, he's a real thinker. He's got a Super Bowl gold ring he always wears from when he played for the Screamers. And he's the only guy in this floor who knows how to play chess. Urban brawl, huh? That's a rough profession. That's a rough for Josie. He says he went whole seasons without any injuries. He was usually playing outrider, though. Will you at least help me look for him? I have this key I swept up the day guard, but they keep a close eye on us. You can have a peek in the infirmary and see if there's a record or something. He might just be in a cool-off room and they won't tell me. Uh, no sweat. I can do that for you. Really? Really? Great. I wish everybody was as nice as you. Not like my mom. Oof. Oof. Hello? Stench of blood and mold gets ever stronger as you move closer to the infirmary. Uh oh. A severed arm lies next to the zipped body bag. The arm looks human and appears neatly severed at the elbow. There's a large gold ring on the index finger. Its owner is probably the occupant of the bag. I'm gonna take the ring. That's Josie. Ah, that seems bad. A trivet disc, you say? Uh, the patient history for Josiah C. Dawson is open on the Sabri Terminal. Read the medical history. Uh, Josiah C. Dawson, date of birth, 7-18-2015. Height, 1.9 meters. Weight, 95 kilograms. Occupation, retired. Allergy, none. Uh, medications. Alprazolam, rabbit, rabexetine. Reason for stay, post-traumatic stress disorder, status deceased. Read the attached notes. Patient had undocumented cyberware in the left arm, as well as multiple pieces of shrapnel in various locations. Complications would likely arise if transplanted planted to another host. The rest of the body is in excellent condition and can be used to improve other subjects, as well as fulfill some custom requests. Huh. Custom requests? Hey, Lorraine. So, did you so did you see anything? I am not sure how to put this. What? Tell me, did he get released? Maybe you should have this. You mean he Oh god. Well, thanks for your help. The noise of a scratchy PA system blasts through the room. Attention, Alley Cat! Please report to the North Hall to meet with the administrator. Damn, that was quick. Hello? The elf standing before you may quite possibly be the ugliest elf you've ever seen. He, is, he has meticulously clean lab coat, format jacket, and old-fashioned bow tie give him the look of an undertaker from centuries past. As you approach the window, he locks eyes with you, smiling a thin, unnerving grin. Smile, not grin. Good day to you. How can I help you? Dr. Holmes, I presume? You're a hard man to reach, especially considering you're dead. I'm sorry, who's dead? He acts genuinely confused, but he can't seem to drop the smile from his lips. Um... It was a good racket you had going here, but you got sloppy with your kills, and now the Ripper's trail leads right to your door. 
The only trail I see is the one that you have left in your own wake. In fact, I believe the Ripper might be standing right in front of me. Guards? Oh, great. Oh, good. Hey! Stop shooting me with a gun. It's not just the one guy, is it? Not a whole lot of guys, clearly. Oh, there's another. Oh my god, does he have two fucking drones now? Did he always have two? Did he buy his second drone with the money he made on the last job we did? Well, the issue is that if I activate his second drone, then... He has zero AP. The nearby intercom speaker crackles to life. The voice of Dr. Holmes begins to blare from it. Attention all personnel, we have a dangerous patient loose inside the facility. Subject is a, is a female troll, but maybe coordinating with other violent defenders. Use all necessary force. Ah, fuck. It'll, it, it, uh, it'll be fine. Let's go, Shannon. We'll be fine. As you venture deeper into the asylum, you see that the inside is every as bit as bad as the outside. Gone is any attempt to hold sanita uphold sanitary hospital aesthetics. With peeling paint, cracked floors, and exposed conduit, the pretense of mental care is shattered. In this modern era, Mercy Mental Hospital is a throwback to the barbaric asylums of old. Prisons and torture chambers rather than places of healing. It's clear that Dr. Holmes is spending his money on something other than, than this facility. You can you continue on. Homes can only run so far. Hmm. I don't think I like this man very much. Ah oh, shit. That was a 99% chance to hit. That's bullshit. Uh oh, this fucking drone. Why are you shooting patients, man? What's up, my guy? You know what? That's actually the least surprising thing. Because they might as well be cops. Okay, you're not an enemy to me, are you? Oh. I hate that. Wow. The intercom begins speaking as soon as you approach. Holmes must be watching from somewhere. You don't understand, do you? This is a place for broken things, but only by breaking them, by further breaking them, can they be remade. And so we must break you. I don't like this guy. I think that this guy is probably some kind of creep who loves to hello, do murders or something. 
I, you know, just the vibe I'm getting for no reason. Oh, I don't want to fight the patients. Ah! Um... He does seem like a jerk. It's interesting that I'm the one who gets the extra movement and nobody else does. Like, what's up with that? I understand I'm the protagonist or whatever, but that should apply to all party members, I reckon. Are there people in here? Oh. Yeah, unfortunately. Are there fucking ley lines here? Huh. Oh, yeah, and only she can see them. Interesting. Huh. What does being in the ley line do? Maybe it helps you do more damage. Because that was a really good hit. Oh, you have to go. Oh my god. Wow! That guy got fucked up. Like, that dude got all the way fucked. That's probably the biggest damage I'm gonna do in the entire game. Alright, is that it? Are we done killing... ...the poor patients of this mental hospital? No, I don't think we are. Oh man, the drone can move so far. Oh, hello. Ow, fuck! That's a doctor. Oh, ex-surgeon? That's interesting. Why is an ex-surgeon working at a mental hospital? Obviously, he's not a doctor anymore. Okay, shoot. Good shot. Hey, it looks real bad over here, though. That looks not ideal. Okay. So we go back this way. I think. I don't think there's anywhere to go. That way. 
There is... Something to interact with here? Yeah! A gate key. Ew. Yeah, it's just a pile of... Viscera, huh? I don't love that. It's not my favorite. From another intercom, Dr. Holmes continues. Someone once told me that I was a broken thing, but he also said that I could remake myself. He wanted to break me down so I could put myself back together again. And I did, but only after I broke him. I can remake you as well. What wonderfully twisted thoughts must churn in the mind such of yours, such as yours. But I'm more inclined to use you for parts. Great. Bro, your vibe is rancid. Did you know? Oh! Why is... Who gave this guy a gun? Where did bro get a gun? Uh oh, that's an AOE as well. Fuck, man! Get rocked, I guess. Sorry. I'm so fucking good at video games, honestly. It's incredible. I'm a brilliant mind. Ooh, that's a big ley line. This robot doesn't have skills, does it? No. I guess how would a robot have skills? Ah! Oh! You son of a bitch! Leave that robot alone! You have aim, Shannon. Oh, you do have skills. Okay, you do you have skills at least. That's nice. Bay line. Um, how's everybody's health doing? She can't heal a robot. Cause that's not how that works. Robots don't exactly got flesh to heal. Oh, you son of a bitch. Oh, that was fine. Get wrecked. Oh wait, stop, 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 stop. Cancel. I'm gonna use that really quick. Uh, the trivet player holds a collection of personal diaries. Some of the video files are missing. Uh, insert and playback trivia number one. Got some cutout chips last week. Tried them out on the patients with violent flashbacks, hoping it would at least mellow them out some. It was like night and day. Once the chip was installed, all of their psychotic brake triggers were blocked. Miss Yuskin has gone four days without attacking the staff or herself. Huh. I was walking to the organ grinders downtown, and there was some kind of event happening at Mega Media. They had a puppet there from Maria Mercurial's label with a Personafix chip in installed, making her an exact doppelganger. They were just using her to hawk some SimSense re-release of a Mercurial, li a Mercurial live show, but it gave me an idea. The cutouts, the body modifications, and my healthy supply of patience, I'm perfectly set up to be a Bunraku fixer. If I can find a supplier for Persona Fix ships, I can sell a full-service Bunraku, even program the behavior trees. Mm. Found a buyer for the first Bunraku. A man in the Barrens offered me 20,000 new yen for the female troll I've been modifying. He likes them big, he says. All that's left is to arrange delivery. He says he can put me in touch with some more buyers if I'll accommodate special orders. These morons' lives are already over anyway. The least they can do is line my pockets. Ugh. 
hate. It's a special kind of slime going on here, I think. But also, unfortunately, a really common kind of slime, also. Before you is a medical lab turned torture chamber. The smell of old blood and decayed flesh permeates the room. Gory stains speak of the body's fluids spilled without regard for well-being or hygiene. There are bodies, probably former patients, trapped in hideous machines enduring horrific experiments. The subjects you can see all appear dead. Any that aren't must, must wish they were. You've chased Holmes to his lair. Just as his face reveals an ugly soul, so to his safe haven. So this is safe haven, it would seem. Wow, my speech is starting to break down. Holmes, Silas, the Emerald Ritty City Ripper. The elf is a monster beyond compare. It's time to end this. Okay, we're gonna kill a serial killer. Another intercom crackles at your elbow. One solid blow would offer a few moments of blessed silence, but this is also a rare chance to get a word in on the good doctor, who greets you with more of his chittering laughter. You are a persistent one, a fine specimen indeed. We both know how this ends, so let's get to it already. Patience, patience, we're not done here yet. I have one last examination to conduct. Pitesil, subdue them. Who? Who? Oh, that's a big guy. Great. Love it. Ooh! I know what I'm doing having Shannon do next turn. Hello? Oh, it was on you. How far can she go? Very dangerous for her. She has quite low health right now. And this... Wow! Okay, it can also strip my armor. That's not great. How much health has it got? A bit. Uh, hey, Shannon, you want to summon a cool creature? Just a cool little guy. I don't know where to put her. Probably farther away from the sky. Wow, one shot! Ah, oh, fuck. Oh, shit. Oh, fuck, that's really not good, actually. That might result in the spirit going haywire. She has no AP to give it. Uh oh. Wait, did I seriously get that lucky? For real? Oh no, the escape chance was only 8%. No way, I, I misread that. I super misread that. Oh, hey man. Bold of you to join us right now, honestly. Considering this guy 
could actually fuck our shit up. That's not what I wanted, actually, but sure. What is that? It's a fucking grenade launcher. That's a grenade launching robot. to drive this drone right up to him. Both of them. <laughs> this guy can have a... Wow, he does have actually a lot of health. Him stunning the rigger actually fucking shut down both of his drones. <laughs> That's wild. I didn't think that would be an issue. Oh, there we go. Hella. We do it. Holmes drops to the ground, the light in his eyes fading fast. But something keeps the shriveled husk of his soul stuck to this mortal coil for a few moments more. This is a place of broken things. I remake them. She... She asked me to remake her. He manages one more laugh, his glazed eyes rolling toward a workbench across the way. She was playing... both of us. Then, with the final wi bloody whimper, the Emerald City Ripper breathes his last. Get wrecked, idiot. Let's see. Good to do. I'll save those last two for later. Alright, is there any, like, evidence to look at in here? Yes, there is. Holmes's workbench falls somewhere between corner slab and medieval torture device. It is decorated within the many colors of death and littered with the instruments of that trade. To one side, there is a leather-bound journal stuffed with uneven pages. To the other is a poxec, its small screen still glowing. Beneath the bench is a rolled sheaf of papers held closed with a tied length of surgical tubing. Uh, investigate the workspace. The bench has clearly played host to numerous bodies over its lifetime. It includes limb restraints as well as skeletal traction mechanisms. At this table, Holmes likely dismembered bodies or quite possibly put them back together. The tackiness of the blood suggested has been used relatively recently. Uh, skim the journal. Leafing through the pages, you find few intelligible entries. Holmes may not have been a real doctor, but his handwriting certainly fits the stereotype. Stuffed in the last few pages is a copy of a disinterment order from a local cemetery, with the grave's occupant marked as Melinda Watts. Hmm. Access the pocket secretary. Holmes is still logged in, granting you access to his currently loaded files. Prominent among them is a hospital report from a donor program. It lists the organs besides the, beside the names and vital statistics of the recipients. Your eye catches Sam Watts' name beside the entry for the liver. Also on the list are the Ripper's other known victims, along with several others who may have shared in the same fate. 
There is also a large sum of new yen, which can easily be transferred to your account. Hell yeah! Uh, examine the rolled sheet of paper. Unfeeling the lar unfurling the large sheet of paper, you discover a diagram of the human female form rendered to an impressive level of detail. It appears to be the blueprint for making Holmes's very own monster. Huh. Interesting. Hello. His ship slot is still fresh, the open wound pink and wet and lurid. His voice drips in innuendo, but his eyes say nobody's home. Well, hello there. Did you come to play? Are you okay? How long have you been here? Of course we're okay. We're ready for a little party. You want to have a little par play party? You want to have a little play party with me? By your name. She's assembled in a standard config. Face of a schoolgirl, body of a stripper. You need some thick beer goggles to miss the work she's had done. Huh. Are y'all... Great. Cool. I hate that. Don't like it. Pretty grim. No! Oh, there was an item back there. As you approach the exit, you realize that Shannon lingers quite a few steps back. Looking back, uh, behind. Looking back, you see that she is half-turned, looking pensively toward the horror show of Holmes's lab. Finally seeing your eyes on her, she faces you and raises her head in a proud, almost defiant manner. We have done much good here tonight. We have removed two vile creatures from this world, and so ended a growing shadow they cast upon the city. Our paths crossed and joined, and we did this thing together. But now, here, our paths must divide. I could sure use your help with what's coming. And I'm sure I could use your help with what I must do next. A distant cry of pain echoes down from somewhere above, and the young shaman pauses to listen to the tortured sound. There is still more work to be done for both of us, but, what's be but what must be done differs for each of us. I came here to find justice for my brother, and that has been done. His spirit can now find rest, but there are other victims of the Ripper, both alive and dead, who still struggle to be at peace. Many of them are here in this place, filling the halls with their torment. I cannot leave them behind. But the spirits have something else in store for you, a different path. You must finish what you've begun. You must confront the first evil that fostered the one we have just ended. I suppose I can respect that. Thank you. Thank you for everything. Because of you, my brother's killer has met swift justice. And justice of the only sort such a man as Holmes deserved. Death. I will now set to the task of healing those he has left behind. For every madman we faced here tonight, there are a dozen innocent souls crying out in need. The spirits of the departed will also need help in passing, or else I fear they may become like those we met in the hangar. They all deserve my help. And what about Lone Star? They can't be far behind. When they enter that room back there, they will have no thoughts other than thoughts of promotion. With the Ripper in hand, my brother will be forgotten along with all the other victims, but so too will I. They will not be a problem. Whether that's true or not, Shannon's confidence and very presence seem capable of making it true. Good luck to you, Alicat. I hope you can find the same justice to your fr I hope you can find the same justice for your friend that I found for my brother. I appreciate that, and good luck to you. Uh, there was an item back here. Hold on. I almost missed it. Mine. Oh, wait, hold on. Yeah. His eyes focus, and his hand raises slowly to touch his head wound. The fingers come away wet and sticky. Panic twitches at the corners of his mouth as he surveys the room. First you, then the girl, then down to his own body, which is no longer his. Sweet Jesus, what did he do? What am I? He begins weeping, his body racked in great, inconsolable, heaving sobs. Oh, that's was maybe not... Is that a good thing to do? Who knows? Who can say? The ride back to the seamstress's union is quiet compared to the pandemonium left behind at Mercy Mental Hospital. Lone Star squad cars pass you on the road, sirens blaring, no doubt in response to the aftermath of your showdown with the late Dr. Henry Holmes. The Emerald City Ripper. The man who violently repossessed the internal organs of Sam and Jessica's mother, Melinda Watts. And although the killer is dead and his grip on the city is broken, 
It's clear he wasn't working alone. There are loose ends aching to be tied. A taxi turns on to Redmond Way, cruising past now familiar landmarks until the seamstress's union, in all its decadent, seedy glory, materializes between swipes of the of it, of its o uh of its overworked windshield wipers. Cool. Um, time to evaluate your next move. Sometimes the writing is a little bit not great, or the prose maybe. I don't know how to describe that. Sometimes shit's just kind of bad. Johnny Clean is talking with Cherry Bomb and Mrs. Kubota when you walk up. Who is talking about you, Alika? And the Emerald City Ripper. Ironically, you tracked the serial killer to a mental hospital. Johnny Clean told us where you were going, Omae. Oh we have been waiting for you to return. I thought you knew better than that, Johnny. Johnny frowns and nods. You're right. I should have kept my mouth shut. I should know better. It's just that we have a personal stake in the Ripper murders. We each have our reasons for wanting the killer found. Sam was a regular here, and his loss has been felt, regardless of his shortcomings. The whole sprawl has been shaken by these killings as well, the randomness of them. No one knows if they will be next or what the killer might take from them. I admit that the killings have hampered business as well. I am sorry, but it is true. It does not help that Sam's body was found down the street from here. Even my regular customers have been loath to venture out with a killer on the loose. Now tell us, Omae, did you find the person responsible for the Ripper murders? The person responsible? No. The killer? Yes. I don't understand. Are you saying the killer wasn't responsible for his own actions? This sounds more complicated than I suspected. It is. The head of the asylum was killing specific people to harvest specific body parts. All of the transplanted organs came from the same donor, Melinda Watts, Sam's mother. It looked like he was... putting her back together. The three are silent as the news sinks in. So, Sam had an organ transplanted from his mother, and then the Ripper killed Sam and all those other people just to reassemble Sam's mother? Grizzly, isn't it? I sense a cause and effect in this. Coyote and Jake Armitage just left here to attend Sam's funeral. I am told that there will be a reinterment ceremony for his mother as well. His sister invited me to the funeral and the reinterment when I met her here. Think his sister Jessica had something to do with it? Hang on, I saw Sam's sister when she was here the other day. She was as corpus as they come, but I can't imagine a lady like that behind a series of murders. There's gotta be something else going on. It is clear that you must go to the funeral and talk with Jessica Watts, Alley Cat. That's where I was headed, Mrs. Kubota. Of course you were. Thank you for allowing us to catch up. Mrs. Kubota stops her, stop, uh, raises her hand and the conversation stops. Wait. Before you go, there is one thing you did not tell us, Alley Cat. Where is the Emerald City Ripper now? <coughs> uh, decomposing. She nods in satisfaction. Hi, that is good. Hell yeah.